When those women grew up and ended up in the survival sex trade, before they died, their children were taken and placed in the foster care system, which further isolated and marginalized the women and, and helped them give up hope to live. The RCMP, the Vancouver Police, or it'd be the Toronto Police, the Regional Halifax Police, were quick to show up with social services and take these women's children away, but they were slow to look for the women when they disappeared or solved their murders. To fight the injustice I constantly witness, I witness rise in the foster care system. I currently work in social services to keep families together. I was actually shocked by what I saw and heard my coworkers do. Some of the stuff I've seen and heard from organizations that claim to be there to keep families together. There was a woman I was working with who was in the federal um, prison system and she got out and she got involved with a guy and had a child. And she didn't have a lot of money so she went to one of these organizations that's you know, supposed to help you out with diapers and you know, tickets and, and formula and that kind of thing. And they ran her name because she was in jail for six years for assaulting a police officer. They thought that she was going to be a danger to her child. So they called social services and had her child removed because she had a record for violence. But here's the other way of looking at it. She was also a First Nations woman who attended residential school, who grew up in Saskatchewan, who didn't know how the white system worked. And the social workers saw an easy target, and that's why they went after her. For the next two years, she fought with the court system to get her child back. Finally, the Caucasian male social worker admitted in court that he took her child away because she was Native and he thought Native women were bad mothers. So finally she got her child back, but not before it was too late. Throughout, throughout that time, she, um, she did a lot of drug use to cope with the issue of her child being taken from her. She ended up developing cancer, and now, unfortunately, her child has to be raised in her sister's care because she's in and out of hospital and she's too sick to take care of her child. So she missed the first two years of her child's life, which are the most important between the mother and a child to bond, and now she's dying in a hospital. And so, and that's just like one example. Another example I know of is where uh, First Nations, another First Nations woman was um, in one of these, she was staying in one of the housing organizations that works to keep families and children together when the women suffer from addiction issues. And the woman just wanted to go get some milk and it was like 11.30 at night, so she left her child with the, the worker there. And so she went to go get some milk and then um, another worker came on and the wor that particular co-worker didn't like the, si like the situation. So she was immediate to call social services and her boss saying the woman abandoned her child with the workers, like with the, the co-workers, the counselors, what you want to call them. And I was actually, I was just, just shocked by like watching that, like how quickly my coworker was to call social services, was to call our boss, was like to do all this stuff to get this woman's child removed. And the woman didn't do anything wrong. She was trying to get milk for her family, for herself and her child. That actually sounds like a pretty responsible thing to do to me. And those are just some of the stories that I'm well aware of. Of um, it, it, the family children and services in Canada just blows me away. They're quick to show up to take your child away for anything. But I've seen cases where children have broken limbs and you call social services and they don't take the child away. And then we hear of other cases uh, where children are taken from uh, First Nations families and they're put in foster care. Like in Manitoba, they have like 10 cases of native children dying in foster care. It makes you wonder, what did these parents do that's so bad that their children had to be removed from foster care to die in foster care? What did these parents do? It's, in the end, it's just, it's just very sickening, and um, like I said, it's all about colonization and genocide. It's about killing off First Nations people, which is what the Queen of England and the Canadian government has been trying to do since the beginning of time. And if we don't stand up and fight this happening to our First Nations people, they're going to continue on moving on to other races, other sectors of society. Because if they can get away with doing it to us, they basically have a plan set up and how they're doing it, and they're going to come after your children next. Many of our